this subject. It is important within the text Viveka Chutamani, the crushed jewel of wisdom. It is said, I am reading from uh, this well-known book, Swami Thiriyananda's Life by Swami Rutachananda Ji. So it is written, Swami Thiriyananda arrived in Los Angeles on July 8, 1900. There, a group of devotees invited him. For a few days, he was the guest of Swami Vivekananda's friends, Mrs. Alice Hansborough and Mrs. Carrie Wickoff. The two ladies took Swami Thiriyananda to the seashore and to the famous orange groves. After two weeks, the Swami left for San Francisco. So it was during his uh, arrival and during his stay in San Francisco that Swami Thiriyananda Ji uh, took up this task of starting a monastic settlement uh, here, a settlement for devotees. You brought a number of devotees from San Francisco and adjoining places. And um, he used to take classes to them on yoga, Vedanta, especially this famous text, Viveka Chudamani. Now, as I said earlier, Viveka Chudamani is one of the well-known introductory texts in Vedanta. In Vedantic tradition, there are three categories of books. The first category is the most important one, the commentaries on the Upanishads, Gita and Brahma Sutra, Sveshankaracharya, which constitute what is known as the three or the triple foundational books in Vedanta, Prasthanatraya, the triple foundational works. They are a bit difficult to understand and can be studied and taught only under a teacher who has studied under another teacher, of course. So in this way, there is a long succession of Vedantic discussion and conversation running in several centuries, teacher, disciple, chain of succession. After this, I mean, after these three books, He wrote a few other minor works, minor in the sense that they are a bit less technical and they give in simple Sanskrit language the fundamental principles and tenets of Advaita Vedanta, the philosophy of non-dualism. In fact, non-dualism is the topic of discussion in all of Shankaracharya's works, in his famous devotional poems, he discusses non-dualism and also in his famous commentaries on Gita, Upanishads and Brahma Sutras and also in these famous introductory works which are called Prakarana Granthas, means introductory works. Yubhagi Chudamani has got three major uh, versions. The shortest version has got around 581 verses. Remember, they are written in metrical form, Sanskrit language. The larger one, largest version contains 586 verses. In fact, if you don't have uh, time or occasion or opportunity to study the highly technical commentaries and Upanishads of Gita and still more highly technical work of Brahma Sutras, If you just study with Viveka Chudamani, Krash Jewel of Wisdom, you will get an idea of Vedanta. Uh, you can read translations. Because Shankaracharya deals not only with the basic philosophical, metaphysical doctrines of non-dualistic philosophy, he also deals with a number of other related topics. Who is a fit disciple? as Prabhupada Nanda Ji Maharaj already discussed, how to approach the scripture and how to approach the teacher and what are the different schools of liberation, how we can remain liberated and still carry on our responsibilities.
you can live in San Francisco as a financier, as a banker, or as a professor, or you can work in the organic farms, still you can remain liberated. That's what Shankaracharya says. Jiva Mukti means Jiva Nabi Mukta means you are liberated, still you live in the world. Our whole total approach towards our life and also our interaction with the rest of the world undergoes a complete transformation. That's what really happens. So, he says, it is possible for one to live in this world in a state of total freedom from the tyranny of the senses. Then, he also deals with, as I said earlier, the uniqueness of human life. The, the, the uniqueness what a golden opportunity it is to be born as a human being. Durlabham trayame zaida devanu graha geetukam manishuttum mumukshuttum maha purusha samsega. In fact, this is what he says almost at the very beginning of the text, maybe the second or third version. There are three important qualifications required for taking to Vedanta, to Vedantic study, and and these qualifications are not acquired by us. They are a gift of God. That's what it means. In other words, if you don't believe in God, still, if you develop these qualities, you can become spiritually liberated. The first one is this. To be born as a human being. Now, it is not a very easy thing to be born as a human being. There are millions of species in the world. Why can't we be born as a worm, as an elephant or a hippopotamus or a bird? We take birth as human beings, therefore we are able to come here to Santi Asama and discuss Vedanta. Which animals can't do that. Now, and not only that, the unique genius, I mean the unique power of wisdom which enables you to stand back away from this flow of instinctive evolution of man, uh, human, be uh, living beings and ask the question, who am I? What's the meaning of my life? In which direction am I going? In which direction I ought to go? This ability to work for raising our, our consciousness to a higher spiritual dimension, to rediscover to explore the divine uh, dimension of our personality is a unique gift from God. And then Mumukshutta means a desire for enlightenment. A desire for, as I said earlier, a desire to ask the question, why am I here? What's the mystery of life? What's the mystery of death? Am I just a living mechanism that takes birth on one day, lives maybe for 90 years, if our health is good, and then ends up in the crematorium with the bodies pushed through, the, through that tunnel, and everything ends up in a piece of stone with a few bouquets and flowers all around. This is the end of human being. Is there something beyond that about this to human life? Shankaracharya says, there is something beyond this. We are not just this physical mechanism. We are not even this mental, psychological or intellectual mechanism. We are something that goes far beyond all this. There is, a, there is an inherent divine reality within us. And he or she is the white person who makes an effort to explore this divine dimension of our personality. And not to live as many as millions of species of living beings live and die and disappear. So he says, Manishuttu, the, the unique gift of human life, being born as a human being, and then a still rare gift of being born with this spiritual wisdom, this intellectual and spiritual courage to ask the question, why am I here? What is, do I have a spiritual dimension to my personality? Or am I just as any of the millions of species that are born, live and vanish? 
the third important characteristic the third qualification necessary for spiritual life and which according to him is a gift of god is the rare opportunity to come in close contact with spiritually enlightened personalities because any amount of reading will not convince us that there is such a thing as spirituality otherwise all the great librarians of the world would have become spiritual giants <laughs> this didn't happen so intellectual knowledge goes very 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 little skin deep when we do come in contact with great spiritual personalities we suddenly start believing well god is not just an idea god is not just a concept spirituality is not an imagination it is something real when we see that spirituality in the life of a living human being and that according to him a still rare opportunity that comes to us by the grace of god now why do we read the scriptures one important benefit of reading the scriptures is we can have an early start very often spirituality is thrust upon most people we turn to spirituality when the destiny drives us to a wall when there is no way out we as a last resort we turn to spirituality but shankaracharya says he or she is the right person who begins at the right time after knocking at many other doors doors don't open to be take to spirituality it is good better than never turning to spiritual life at any time of course no doubt about it being compelled to turn to spirituality is better than never turning to spiritual life but he says he or she is the wise is a wise person who takes a decision at an early stage and takes an early start will have an early start in spiritual life because that helps us to find answer who we are in what direction we move what is the mystery of life and how to rediscover and realize our true spiritual dimension these are some of the very wonderful ideas discussed and even if we cannot some of some of our friends may not be able to read the original sanskrit text still if they just read the translation to riyan the himself has written a translation there are innumerable translations available very elaborate translations are also available uh, shankaracharya of singeri wrote a very wonderful translation in what translation but is commentary on vivega chudamani and that sanskrit commentary has been translated into english very elaborate uh, commentary so even if you don't read any other book the vegu chudamani can provide us with all information and it is certainly one of the uh, one of the royal path ways one of the finest introductions to vedantic philosophy not only vedantic philosophy the spiritual tradition of vedanta thank you